So, part three of my response to Anita Sarkeesian's Damsels in Distress Tropes vs. Women series. And what a ride it's been. I feel that this is somehow going to be my longest video response yet, because I have a lot to get out of the way since she makes a lot more claims. But, having said that, I think the best way to go forth is to first review what I've been saying these past two video responses. Number one, Sarkeesian has completely decided to opt out of the tried and tested method set out by academia to do her research and prove her thesis and instead opt for presupposition, considering she presupposes that games are specifically out there just as a medium to subjugate women via damsel in distress trope. And so that we can create this clear disparity between the genders and create the boys club that she sees within gaming. So even if all the evidence she offered up wasn't completely hogwash, her flawed research method and her presuppositional tactics pretty much erode away any semblance of academic credibility she tries to build up. Secondly, it's not like the gaming industry is all full of guys, okay? True, there tend to be more male gamers, especially within the action genre, but there is a large portion of female gamers. Why is this important? Well, because what are games designed for in the first place? They're not designed to push one ideology over another. They certainly aren't designed to to subjugate women and empower men. What games are designed for is to essentially make a profit. It's just that simple. Game designers are only in this in this industry to make a profit. Let's just say I was a bigot, okay, and I decided to open up a restaurant and I said, well, I don't want to serve any gay people. Do you know how many enemies I would make? Do you know how many people would be upset with me? And how much business I would lose? Even if I was bigoted in that way, I don't think I would be that stupid as to, as to indulge in my prejudices and essentially lose profit. Now that the review of previous videos has passed, let's dance, shall we? So you briefly glance over how there are a few games where there is a dude in distress in which a woman has to go save him. You talk extensively of the game Super Princess Peach, which I myself have not played, but I have seen playthroughs of, and so I do know the basic gameplay mechanics, and I do know the basic story. I don't see how focusing on the parasol, which in fact was an, a male character, I don't see how that's sexist. I don't see how that takes away from Princess Peach having to save Mario and Luigi. As for the whole mood swing power thing, I don't really view that as inherently sexist, and here's why. Imagine you're playing Pokemon. You know, very common franchise, gaming franchise, everyone knows Pokemon, right? You catch a bunch of monsters and Pokeballs, and you use them to battle each other and do shit. Well, okay, is that animal cruelty if I use Pokemon in battle? Am I saying that that animal cruelty is fun? Because I'm having fun using Pokemon to beat each other up and uh, knock each other out. Is, is Does that mean I'm a cruel person? No, of course not! The only reason I think that you would view this game as sexist is the reason I think you view everything as sexist. It's because your worldview is so biased and so twisted that everything and anything could be viewed with a feminist lens, and you could always say, well, there's, there's a disparity between the genders here. Oh, I see subjugation of women here, and, and men are just drawing from that. So then you make a comparison between the damsel in distress and the dude in distress and how you say you don't think that they're equivalent. And the first reason you say they are not equivalent is because there is no shortage of male protagonists and female damsels, whereas the opposite is not true. Okay, so first reason is because there is more male protagonists than female protagonists. And, and more damsels in distress than dudes in distress? Well, whoopty fucking do. You just made an argument ad populum. 
oh, well, it looks like there are more of them. I guess that it's true that everyone is just out to subjugate women and empower men and, and game designers and the gaming community alike. Oh, we just want to keep this a boys club. Anita states that in a recent study, only 4% of modern titles feature a female protagonist. Well, I would like to see that study, first of all, because you never link to any of your shit. So, I'm actually curious as to what she thinks we should do about this. Like, like, does, do we have to make all these games with dudes in distress that maybe there might not be a large market for, just so that it will appease feminists and make her and her ilk happy? Like... She even says later on that that's not the answer. So what the fuck is she proposing? Secondly, and I quote, Damsel's female characters tend to reinforce pre-existing regressive notions about women as a group being weak or in need of protection because of their gender, while stories with the occasional helpless male character do not perpetrate anything negative about men as a whole, unquote. Does anyone else see the problem here? Let me see if I got this straight. So she starts off with the presupposition that this is a patriarchal system where women are robbed of their power and men take that power so that we can subjugate women even more. So that's the first starting point. She goes from there and says that video games are a reflection of said patriarchal system especially through damsel in distress, the trope. So, why damsels in distress aren't equivalent to dudes in distress is, according to her, is because there has not been any pre-existing history with uh, gender stereotypes of men being weak or passive or in need of help. Gender stereotypes are, of course, in her worldview, seen as tools for males to use as part of the patriarchal system to subjugate women. Is that a fair assumption? Because I think that most of you would agree that that is what she believes, and that is what all feminists essentially believe. So let me use this example. I'm Asian, and I think that the world is out specifically just to hate on Asians. Uh, it's, it's a product of those privileged white devils out there who just want to rob me of my power. And, and how they do this, especially in video games, is that when have Asians ever been the main character in any video game that has sold a lot? Like, we might have been side characters. Asians might be like the wise old sage or that guy that knows kung fu and whatnot. But we've never been like main characters apart from fighting games. So why why don't we Asians get more screen time as 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 protagonists? Why can't we have the limelight as opposed to white people? We should have an equal mix of Asian protagonists and white protagonists. And yeah, there have been some games that feature an Asian protagonist, and they do so in a very comical manner, like how we Asians are often portrayed as geeky or nerdy, and we know kung fu and whatnot, but what these games do, and how they feature Asians as protagonists, is not the same from how white people feature uh, white protagonists, because uh, clearly those games have no value whatsoever since there aren't enough games with Asian protagonists out there. Not to mention that, historically speaking, Asians have always had the shittier end of the bargain, considering how white people used to use us as, like, lower-class citizens to do their dirty work and build train tracks. So do I get to complain now about video games not having Asian protagonists, or can we all agree that this logical train is just absolutely ridiculous? You then go on to talk about how game designers use parodies of Damsel in Distress, or they use, like, the ironic Damsel in Distress, and you're saying, oh, well, game designers just tend to use these to still perpetuate these negative stereotypes, but they say it's a parody just so they can avoid negative backlash. To which I reply, okay, if you're going to take something as over-the-top as Fat Princess seriously, I don't view you as a misogynist in any way. I don't view you as necessarily 
a product of what's wrong with the patriarchy. I view you as an individual who needs psychiatric help. When I play a game like Fat Princess, I'm laughing at the gameplay because I think it's absolutely hilarious. It's something I don't expect, and it's something that in a society which I think is way too concerned about offending women and offending feminists, is something that's a breath of fresh air. And I wouldn't be the first. I'm not a misogynist. I'm not someone who hates women, but I still find something like Fat Princess absolutely hilarious. Because I don't take it seriously, and I'm rational enough and human enough not to take this seriously. Because most people would not think that holding a woman captive and uh, force-feeding her cake is acceptable behavior. And you think that in a system which is patriarchal, that all men are these pigs that think that this is acceptable and you'd be dead wrong. These parodies of the damsel in distress trope aren't perpetuating the stereotype. On the contrary, they're taking it to the extreme and showing us why these stereotypes are ridiculous. And yes, I sometimes find that extremely hilarious. Let's take the comedian Russell Peters as an example. He makes a lot of jokes about race. Does that mean that if I laugh at his jokes that I'm automatically a racist? Is everyone in his audience automatically a racist? Of course not. The whole point of comedy like this is to take things like racist stereotypes, sexist stereotypes, take them to the extreme, to the hilarious extreme, and show them off for how ridiculous they are. And... A lot of the times it is funny because these things are ridiculous. We're not laughing at women. We're not laughing at how often they can be powerless or how sometimes these stereotypes still continue to exist. We're laughing because these stereotypes are ridiculous, especially when taken to such an extreme. I can't believe I have to explain a parody and what the point of parody even is, but apparently there is a first time for everything. So, pop culture critic, or media critic, or whatever you call yourself, Anita Sarkeesian, I don't know what kind of fucking research you've been doing, I don't know what kind of rock you've been living under, but goddamn, you better pull your head out of your ass. So what have we learned in your videos today? Well, you still have not provided a shred of evidence, at least not concrete evidence, to prove anything you've said thus far. Uh, you pretty much regurgitate the same shit you've been saying in the past two videos with only a couple of variations to address. And finally, I know now for sure that you have not played any of the games that you have said that you researched. Do you know how I know? You mentioned one of the games that I have played extensively. In fact, it's one of my favorite games. Ghost Trick, Phantom Detective. You know how you specifically show that scene with uh, the girl getting tied up? Well, uh, you also fail to explain that in the game, you're playing as the ghost and you have to save a whole bunch of people. Actually, most of them are men. And who do you play as in this game? Sissel. He's a man, right? No, he's not. Spoiler alert. He's a cat. So, this entire time... In the game, you've been playing as a cat, saving other people's lives. You don't do it because you want to get laid. You don't want to do it because you view the women in this game as objects. You do it out of your own goodwill. And in the end, what do you get? You get happily ever after, because you get to live with them. So, how is that inherently sexist? Obviously, you only looked through all the clips you could find, and you found that particular one and pulled it completely out of context. And all it took for you to do to find out that that particular scene did not exemplify the tone of the whole game was just to look at the basic fucking summary on Wikipedia. And did you do that? No! You just searched through every single game you possibly could until you could find something even remotely resembling a damsel in distress and then you pull it completely out of the context of the game, and then you go, whoa, look at how sexist this game is. Look at how sexist that game is. Look at how sexist everything is. <gasps> oh, no. 
Either your research is incredibly lazy, or you seem to take me and every other gamer who's watched your videos as fools, because you don't think we've actually played the games that you mention. And you'd be dead wrong. We have. And I won't be the first to point out something like this, and I certainly won't be the last. So who does this benefit in the end? Doesn't benefit gamers. Doesn't benefit guys. Doesn't even benefit women, when you think about it. Why not? Well, compare your brand of feminism, complaining about how there aren't enough games with female protagonists, and complaining about how male protagonists have all the limelight and how this clearly perpetuates these horrible stereotypes that you have to face every day. Compare that to the feminism of third world countries, where women have to fight for their right to be treated like human beings, where they have to fight for their right not to be stoned after they get raped. Yeah, you tell me how your feminism compares to the feminism of third world countries then we can talk. May the truth always be heard. Peace out.